Okay, well, welcome back to part three. What we've now done is uh, run this test by adding saliva and wiping it around the mouth. We've added a good sample of saliva, so we're pretty confident this is going to have adequate saliva for it to run completely. And you'll see what's happening gradually is that pink dye is uh, transversing the uh, test areas on these membranes, working its way towards that top area, the control line. Okay, now you've got to wait as you see, this isn't an instant test, it's got to run through that membrane and then you're waiting for the uh, lines to form against each drug group abbreviation. You must, before you interpret any results, have your control lines showing fully. And the other thing just to emphasize about sample collection here, we mentioned the importance of wiping the test around the buccal membrane in front of the teeth, top and bottom on both sides and also the top of the oral cavity and the tongue before you start asking the person to add straight saliva. The importance of that is to pick up any drug residues that have been deposited around the mouth. And that is particularly of importance when we're screening for cannabis because these tests do not detect any cannabis metabolites to any degree that are re-excreted into the saliva and then detected through this membrane. They work by detecting the parent drug group alone and they do so by detecting deposits of the drug which are placed around the mouth during taking the drug. So that is very important. The other thing to say is that you want to catch somebody and run one of these tests when they haven't eaten or drunk something for at least 20 minutes, when they haven't smoked for at least 20 minutes, ideally half an hour. And you also want to do it in an unannounced fashion so they don't have the opportunity to rinse or wash their mouth beyond when you suspect they may have been using the drugs. The detection window periods for saliva drug tests are significantly smaller or shorter than the corresponding urine tests. And it's very important to time the test procedure in relationship to the abuse period or abuse action. So that, that is, again, an important point to make and differentiates the, your choice between uh, a urine drug screening program and a saliva drug screening. The advantages of using saliva are that, particularly in a workplace setting, you're really only detecting for recent drug use and drugs that may still be active in the system and consequently affecting their ability to undertake a role or a at-risk responsibility that you're asking. So now you can see that we've, we've run this test while I've been talking to you. And what I'm going to try and do is bring this closer to the focal point and is that going to focus up? We've got a bit of a problem there. Still not showing particularly clearly is it? It's not refocusing. But I think what you can just about make out in there is that you've got some nice clear lines against both control areas. And then if you look at the corresponding drug group codes, you've got a set, a full set in this instance of six test lines. Now you will notice that the test lines vary in colour, thickness, density and saturation. I'm just going to put this down because I'm not getting a good focus on this uh, test cassette. I think it's probably better if I just try and zoom in a bit. Let's just see if that'll work for you. I think we're pushing the boundaries of this lens. There we go. I think that's about as good as we're going to get. So, a little bit about colour density, thickness and saturation on your test lines. Because people look at these when they're not familiar and uh, doing tests day in, day out. And they think, oh, that's a really thin, faint line. For instance, against the fentanyl there. Hardly discernible. Very thin, very faint. But it is a test line. And the important bit of advice we have to emphasise time and time again is, at the read time, in the presence of a control line, any test line, no matter how thin, no matter how faint, is a clear negative result. You cannot interpret anything in terms of, oh, it's just negative, must be a low level there. It's at the boundary or border of going from a positive to a negative. That isn't the case at all. Any test line, no matter how thin, no matter how faint, clear negative, okay? A positive result is indicated by the complete absence at the read time of a test line, any line, there will be nothing discernible there in the presence of a control line at the correct read time. So that's a <coughs> very important piece of uh, advice in terms of interpretation of these test results. So there we have it. It's taken about five to ten minutes to run a complete test. 
they once you get going with these this is one of the best design saliva tests because you don't actually have to handle any saliva you're not decanting anything you're not measuring anything you're not dropping saliva into a test well for it to run these membranes they can be left in the donor's mouth until you see that there's been adequate saliva applied to the uh, membranes for them to run so there really is in terms of the procedure very little for you to get wrong there is all the accuracy on these test mem membranes that you get with the single or smaller drug test combinations from all test their overall accuracy is between 97 and 99 percent when you compare them to the gas chromatography mass spectrometry tests that are available as the gold standard confirmation tests and again in workplace settings when you're doing these on employees and you're picking up a non-negative or a positive result then you must confirm these results using one of those accredited methods and we have available through the website low-cost options for single drug group confirmations both in urine format test collection and saliva format test collection it's a slightly reduced range of saliva membrane tests that are confirmed with UCAS accreditation for workplace certification but the test is still of the quality for UCAS workplace full chain of custody confirmation testing so if you are doing these and you're expecting or going to pick up positives and we always recommend to buyers that you're looking at between four and six percent pickup rate on urine slightly lower on saliva but if you're screening for cannabis and the common drugs of abuse and particularly if you're screening for these modern painkillers for the first time because people have assumed that these are going to go on under the detection window and uh, not be picked up so these are important screens to, to add into your testing program and most of these membranes are, are now available particularly in the urine formats for, for confirmation testing but if you do pick up one of these new groups then please, before you just automatically send off a saliva test, do check with us that we have got UCAS accreditation currently in the laboratory service for that confirmation test to be done. And we will advise you whether it can be done via a saliva route or a urine route. So that's the DSD 863 FYL fentanyl combo available currently on the UK drug testing website. We have also uh, combine this up with the DSD863 MET to form a 12 drug combination test option which is the two six panels that can be run side by side or individually so it gives you the maximum flexibility in terms of your testing program and that's available as the DSD combo pack uh, it's on the website just after the barrel combination 12s